keeping animals, you're always gonna have some kind of uh, complication and knowing actually how to deal with it is critical. Right now, I'm looking at a panther chameleon. I've been working on this guy for over a week now. You see that? Ooh. That's a distended cloaca. So that the little muscle that holds the lower part of the GI, essentially the colon and whatnot, in has weakened. And what's happening now is some of the lower GI is has prolapsed and it's it's telescoping out his butt. If you do not address this properly, uh, this animal is doomed. So I've been dealing with it and it looked really terrible. Uh, and now I'm getting to the point where I'm getting it under control and I'm gonna tell you a couple things that you wanna consider. All right, in the event your snake or your chameleon or something like that, we have other videos dealing with snakes, prolapsed, we even actually had one of our croc monitors that ages ago had prolapsed. Uh, I would say it's probably even more common in a chameleon like this. First thing you do is you're going to want to get that guy into some water because if you do not keep that material wet and clean, it's gonna, uh, it's gonna die. If it dries out, it's gonna become necrotic. You could actually lose the integrity of its uh, cloaca. So if you, get, if you perforate that, it's deadly, it's, it's horrible. So what you do, you can take a rag, two rags together and I roll them up like this. Chameleons get really stressed out when they don't have something good to grab onto, grapple with. So what I do, I'm gonna, I, I put him on that. And what's good about the towel, the towel is gonna wick up some, an antibacterial agent. So in this case, we're gonna use some uh, diluted Nolvasan. I avoid uh, things that oxidize like hydrogen peroxide. Pure hydrogen peroxide, actually, I think it's like 3% in a bottle. If you pour that on a wound, it actually oxidizes and actually just degrades living tissue. So I have a chameleon. Chameleon's a little bit trickier. It doesn't wanna sit in water. Uh, if you leave it sitting in water, it causes a lot of stress. As I'm irrigating this, I want to get like rid of any urea, all that different stuff. So when this first came out, it was just really, really large and angry. Uh, now it's, it's kind of uh, shrinking up. What my objective here is, is to get the outside material to slough off. So that, if I manage everything right, that will uh, eventually come off. And then uh, at that point, I can then put it back in the animal. But generally, when you find this, stabilize it, like I said, in water, and then it's time to call your vet. And your vet is gonna have a lot of the materials, supplies to do this. Uh, actually, maybe put this guy on a systemic antibiotic, so uh, this could go on uh, a non-renal affecting uh, antibiotic. He's not liking any of this. Now it's clean. The next thing we can do to stabilize it, I use some different uh, antibiotic ointments and then I can put that all over it and that's gonna um, protect it. It's gonna be antibacterial. We wanna keep the tissue moist, clean, and with some kind of antibacterial. So I can use teramycin, povo iodine gel, a triple antibiotic, all these different things. And we're largely in with gram negative bacteria. You said the urate's on there? Yeah, some like urates. Your, your objective is just to try to keep everything clean. So then I take now this would be a step that you wouldn't recommend to people. You get this is I would get if you get to the vet. The vet's the way to go. It's uh, if you especially it's it's very horrific what it can be, and this will definitely kill your animal. We don't want to get a lot of material that's dying or any kind of essentially you know any kind of filth or whatever. We want this really clean. Same thing over here. Pretty clean. Yeah, how, did it, how do you think it got to this, by the way? Uh, she takes excellent care of her animals, uh, but there was a period of time, she was in the hospital uh -huh. with COVID. And uh, there was a period of time that this animal uh, had no care. So it got massively dehydrated. It got uh, very malnourished. And maybe that stress, although that stress was you know, a while ago, months ago, 
it might manifest now. And all this is just keeping it moist. So then this goes into a bin. Remember, we got to keep, we want to reduce stress and want to keep them quiet. So you can see some of this red stuff. That's the povo iodine ointment. It stains things. So at this point, this little guy can stay here. And what I'm doing is I'm providing ambient temperatures where there is some kind of immune response. I don't want him crawling out. I don't want any of that. And then what I do is I can add some water to this and then a little bit of Nova sand. But what's great about this, I can irrigate this whole thing with Nova sand. So as he's sitting there, he's in touch with something and I'll do that like twice a day. So if everything goes well, in about two days, I'm gonna be able to debride that. So the dead tissue is gonna to start to slough off. At that point, if I can get it off there and I feel comfortable, I will then uh, work on putting it back into the animal. And at that point, like if this was a vet, they would probably put a stitch in there. So that what you're gonna do is you're just gonna physically capture the cloaca and it's closed position uh, to simulate what this, that little muscle is going to do. And then you leave that stitch in there for a little bit or a couple stitches and eventually you remove that and the muscle has healed, holds everything. I'm probably going to do something with the electrical tape. That's another little trick. But when you have an animal and you come in and you find this, guys, get it, get it into a little bit of soak, get it in some water, get it irrigated. So then you have to do your due diligence, find a good vet, but this is called the distended cloaca and the reason for it, there's a lot of different reasons, uh, but it can be life-threatening because once the internals of the animal are outside, it leaves it vulnerable for bacteria, for fungus, for all these different things, and actual physical abrasions because this is not designed to be outside the body. So this is pretty tricky stuff and you got to do your best to manage this. This is a big shout out for one of our biggest, bestest, awesomest fan, that's Jay Muller. And uh, we have now started doing our content on Patreon. So that's patreon.com forward slash New England Reptile. All my content that goes on my phone, and there's tons that never makes it to any video. It's all this weird little thing with my humor and all the different stuff. Donnie will now actually have uh, a way to utilize a lot of that video. And that also, I think there's a lot of interesting things there. You can see how weird I am and that's really weird. And I really do appreciate all five of you that have joined the Patreon. I also wanna also, let's get down to brass tacks. I understand that one Dingo Dinkleman has a little cute little Patreon channel. And you know, if you don't have a lot of money and you're on his thing and you're like, well, I really like to go subscribe to New England Reptile or I can stay with Dingo. Well, you gotta think, where is your $5 gonna go further? Clearly with me, cause I only have like three of you in my audience. Yeah, Dingo's got enough money. I think he's a billionaire. Yeah, Dingo with all that charm and charisma, he's bigger than life. That means his wallet is fat. He's got a pool, guys. Kevin doesn't have a pool. All right. Oh. That's true. Oh. Oh. You know? Oh. And guys, please help us break the 5,000 core members of our Discord. After, after all, we really appreciate you guys. And we're actually doing this because you guys comment, you guys talk to us, because nobody else will. I gotta turn my camera on, dude. You didn't turn your camera on!